this is a small one, a Tier 8 Pan-European Destroyer. Yep, it is the top of the line of the Pan-European Destroyers, and it has great torpedoes, pretty good guns, but what it is lacking is smoke. And it does have a radar if you want to go ahead and configure that or a repair party, which we'll go over in a little bit. With that, let's get into the setup of the ship and the commander, who is Stig Erickson. Base trait is Thunderbolt, which improves the engine boost cooldown time and the torpedo damage. And in here I went with a new double concealment setup with Eric Bay for Shifty, which improves the destroyer's detectability, and then Deng Shishang, Quantum of Solace, which also improves the destroyer's detectability, but it does increase the torpedo damage. Each of those is 2.7% improvement on each of those. And then for the skills, we have Subsurface Venture, which improves the torpedo speed and the torpedo launcher reload time, but it is at the cost of main battery reload time. Then we have Look At Me Now, which maxes out the concealment with sea detectability range improvement of 6%. Then I've selected Back in Stock, which improves the torpedo launcher reload time rather than Perceptive. Um, this is kind of old school. I'm going with Back in Stock, and I'm doing okay so far. Fourth skill is Sheltered Arms, which improves the risk of the main battery being incapacitated. It's 75% uh, improvement there, and the risk of the torpedo launcher is being incapacitated. Both of those are 75%. Legendary skill is Unstoppable, which improves the engine repair time, and it allows for a reduced mobility with a disabled engine at our rudder. Special effect is a damage control party. Cooldown time is improved by 50%, when you're within four and a half kilometers of an enemy ship and that is at legendary rank two going up to legendary rank four maxes that distance to an enemy ship to seven and a half kilometers all right let's check out the upgrades for the small end first upgrade is aiming systems mod one which improves the main battery dispersion and a torpedo launcher traverse speed um, i didn't think that i needed a quicker traverse time so we went with the accuracy here for the first upgrade then we went with Propulsion Mod 2, which improves the time taken to reach full power uh, by half, cuts that by 50%. Then we went with Concealment System Mod 1, which improves the detectability range by 10%, and it doubles up on the incoming fire dispersion to any fully upgraded camo by an additional 5%. And then we went with the Torpedo Launchers Mod 3 here, which improves the Torpedo Launcher Reload Time by 15% but it is at the risk of the torpedo launchers being incapacitated by 50%. So uh, you gotta watch out for that. Hasn't really been a problem though. As far as the loadout, you have high explosive shells, armor piercing shells, and the torpedoes, which we'll go over in the statistics. Damage control party, duration is five seconds, reloads every 40 seconds, and there's an unlimited number of those. Engine boost consumable, which temporarily increases the ship's maximum speed by 30% when the consumable is running, runs for 60 seconds, reloads every 97.3 seconds, and there are three of those consumables. And here, this is kind of a controversial choice, probably, picking the repair party consumable rather than the radar. The radar would uh, detect ships at 7.5 kilometers. It would run for 20 seconds, reloads every 180 seconds, and there are two of those. I went with the repair party consumable for my initial uh, run through with the ship. It partially restores the ship's HP by repairing any light damage at the rate of uh, 184 hit points per second. Runs for 14 seconds, reloads every two minutes, and there is uh, two of those consumables. And the fourth consumable is defensive AA fire, which increases the efficiency of the AA by 200% when the consumable is running runs for 40 seconds, reloads every 150 seconds, and there are two of those consumables. I don't have any boosters set up, but that could change depending on the match. Then as far as the camo, the ship does not come with any camo, so I created permanent camouflage with European disposable camo that I've been saving up. Sea detectability range and incoming fire dispersion is 4.5%. This is a fully upgraded grade 4 camo here. Specs, survivability hit points is 18,500. Armor is 6 to 20 millimeter. 
Artillery, you have four guns. They reach out to 11 kilometers, which is pretty good. Reloads every 2.3 seconds, and that is awesome. Traverse time is 7.2 seconds, and that's why we didn't need that traverse upgrade and upgrade slot number one. HE shells have a maximum of 1750 with an 8% chance of setting fire, and that is every two seconds. Armor piercing has a maximum of 2100. And then as far as the torpedoes, you have identical torpedoes on two launchers, but they're configured a little differently than what you've been used to. The first launcher has three torpedoes, second launcher has five torpedoes, and in any event, the torpedoes reload in 60.3 seconds. Maximum damage is 11,278. Detectability range by sea is probably kind of high at 1.8 kilometers, but their range is 13 and a half kilometers and their speed is 90 knots. And that kind of makes up for the high detectability range by sea is the extreme speed of these torpedoes. I can't think of any other torpedoes in my port that has a higher speed than 90 knots. Defensive AA fire, you will definitely clear the sky with the small one. Maneuverability, 35 knots, maximum speed. Turning circle radius is 660 meters. Rudder shift time is 4.3 seconds. Concealment is 5.3 kilometers. Detectability range by sea. Detectability range by air is three kilometers. And if you're firing in a smoke, it is two and a half kilometers. Then the armor, whatever you do, don't get hit. Overview, reloader, above average main battery reload speed. And yeah, 2.3 seconds is pretty darn quick. Rapid reload, above average torpedo reload speed. So you got both of those going there. Quick torpedoes and quick main guns. And it does have the heel consumable that we've configured. And the destroyer is equipped with the repair party consumable. And it's either that or the radar. And yeah, I've selected the heel consumable for the highlight video you're going to see. So then the Smalland was one of the largest and most powerful destroyers in the Swedish Royal Navy, armed with highly effective 4.7 inch, 120 millimeter main guns that boasted a high rate of fire. The ship's distinctive feature was her torpedo launchers with different numbers of tubes. Entered service in 1956 and there were two ships in the series. All right, well, that's it for the setup of the ship and the commander. Let's go out in a standard match and check out some highlights. All right, well, here we are in Shatter, and wow, in the other team, there's another small end, which may or may not have a radar set up, and the Alaska, which definitely has a radar. So the rest are battleships and a couple more destroyers. So the torpedoes on the small end in any event are definitely uh, big time with 11K damage, 60 second reload, 13 and a half kilometer range and 90 knot speed. That is the big one is the 90 knot speed combined with the 13 and a half kilometer range. The pan-European destroyers have been uh, the, the, their hallmark is, you know, no smoke, and they do have pretty quick reloading torpedoes and pretty quick speed, but they don't produce that much damage. So at 11,000 damage output, these torpedoes are getting up there, and uh, the potential is quite a bit here with the small end. So we are just going to come around over here by A. We're scoping out the situation, checking out our torpedoes, nothing so far. But we're going to come around here on the other side of the island and see if we could surprise that ship that's on the other side over there. So there is a Schlieffen. Yeah, nothing doing there. Going to come around here, check out the Alaska. We definitely want to stay out of the Alaska's radar range, but there is a Yamato which is in range, and this is absolutely perfect. So we are going to take a shot right on the targeting line, and we're gonna pull back a little bit and take the second torpedo shot a little behind, and hope that we can catch either the Alaska or the Yamato, actually. It doesn't really matter which one we hit, but at 90 knots speed, 
those torpedoes are going to get over there pretty darn quick. Probably three times the speed of those ships actually with uh, 90 knots. Alaska might be a little faster than 30 knots, but the Yamato definitely is not. So uh, here is uh, another opportunity here, and if we can reload in 20 seconds. Look at this. Looks like we're going to get four big-time hits here, at least three anyway. So, yeah, he turned away at the last moment. Uh, only two hits. I thought we were going to get three there. So, uh, yeah, RNG. Uh, uh, probably wasn't RNG, but... Uh, Anyway, we are re reloaded and we are taking some shots there. I went with a narrow spread and a wide spread on the Alaska. And a lot of times I like to do that on either destroyers or pretty quick moving cruisers to try to spread out the torpedo spread a little bit. But in any event, I am turning away because as soon as the Alaska sees those torpedoes, I figure he's going to fire his radar. And that is generally how you get uh, found out most times in a destroyer uh, from an Alaska. And there, one of our teammates is gone already. Two teammates are gone. So a destroyer and uh, battleship is gone right there. We do get another hit and another flooding. So here's something with the pan-European destroyers is a huge percentage of the torpedo hits do generate floods so this is pretty big time here looks like the Alaska is coming back to look for us and there's that radar I was looking for there uh, yeah so I can expect a barrage coming in from the Alaska and pretty much 90% uh, of these guys are super accurate with their guns it's unbelievable if you're visible for just a split second you get wiped out by the entire team uh, at least that seems to happen to me more times than not. But we are moving to get out of his radar range and visibility. 5.3 kilometer concealment is uh, pretty good. Especially since we don't have any smoke. And yeah, so we have the any aircraft consumable. And you rarely get a aircraft carrier match with the small end is what I found out. Uh, uh, just like... With the Agincourt, which doesn't have any AA, uh, you pretty much always get into an aircraft carrier match when you're in the Agincourt. But back to the small end. Here, I'm coming up to A. I figure that that Alaska is pretty busy with all those torpedoes. And there I went with the narrow spread on the torpedoes as we're closing up on the Iwami. I plan to come in here and start capturing A and fire the torpedoes over in a direction hopefully before the aiming indicator goes behind that island and that is uh that just kills it kills me right there when that happens seems to happen more times than not where uh, right when you get reloaded the aiming indicator is in the island like that so that is um that's great but that is just what you got to deal with and here's the alaska uh, aiming indicator is behind the island there. Here are the Schlieffen. I'm trying to decide whether I want to take a shot there. It looks like those torpedoes will clear, and I decide to take a shot anyway. And yeah, it looks like the uh, intercept point is behind that far island over there. So it looks like the Iwami is going to clear this island. I'm waiting for the aiming indicator to spread out so there I decided to take a shot hoping that uh, he would accelerate a lot of my torpedo shots are actually I think I, I have a good aim and the torpedoes end up behind the ship so we'll see how this goes got two spreads going at two different ships we have four torpedo hits already looks like nothing on the Schlieffen there because he is bow on And we're going to come over here, take a look at the Iwami. He should be emerging from uh, from the island over there. And you can barely see him over there on the uh, right-hand side of the screen. Took a shot at the Schlieffen coming out from uh, his little cubby hole there. And here's another uh, deal right when you get um, reloaded. That aiming indicator is... Uh, 
going to be beyond that island. And here, this looks like a bunch of good hits right here. Uh, four big time hits on that Schlieffen. So we're up to 86,000 damage on eight torpedo hits. So that is a big time damage output. And this is exactly what I expect on the small end. And the Alaska looks like has fired up his radar again. And this just kills you uh, in general. It's sort of like a big problem there. I'm taking a random shot in the gap there just in case. You really never know. So now I'm looking to separate myself from the Alaska to try to get out of his radar range. And here comes the main gunfire. And there we successfully evaded his shots. And this is kind of dicey because there is the Awami barely outside of my detection range or my concealment. Uh, 5.3 kilometers here this is uh, some bad luck on the uh, the Shimakaze player right there and it looks like we're gonna get a bunch of hit well actually it doesn't because he's backing up and we're lucky to get one hit and there is yet another flooding so nine torpedo hits and six flooding so you can definitely count on the pan-european destroyers to get floods with their torpedoes. Looks like the Alaska player is still coming after us. I'm figuring he's a fan of the channel and that's fine. And let's take a shot at the Alaska player. He doesn't think he has a completely free ride. Give him something to think about. We're up to 96,000 damage. And we are behind in the match big time here with only five minutes to go. So if we pull this one out, this is going to be crazy. There is the red team Smallin, and he is gone at the same time he took out uh, my teammate right there. And so now this is bad. Less than five minutes to go. It's looking like the only way we can get this done is to take out everybody on the red team. And there we are even on ships, but we are really down on bases captured so there it looks like this Alaska got wiped out and there's just one battleship left so it looks like uh, we are gonna snatch victory from the jaws of defeat and there's a Yamato player and yeah I am thinking of a big time YOLO attempt right here Engine boost activated. and he is we are loaded So we take a shot at the um, Yamato player. I'm not sure why my teammate is telling me to get back when we are definitely behind. We have no chance to really win this unless we take this guy out like this. And this looks like a bunch of good hits right here. Four more hits and two more floodings. It looks like he damage conned immediately. We have three and a half minutes left. hundred and twenty seven thousand damage on 13 torpedo hits eight floodings hoping that he emerges from the island is what I'm looking for so there in the gap he's going for the gap it looks like and yeah those torpedoes look like they're going to intercept him in the gap at least that's the initial plan Those actually look pretty good. He is turning away. There's one torpedo hit and a flooding. And yeah, wow. Uh, Yamato can turn pretty good when it needs to, but now I've got to close up in here and definitely do a yellow attempt because there is a very narrow gap between those islands. 
he is flooding out. If he keeps moving like this, the only shot I have to fire my torpedoes at him is to get within the detection range of the Yamato. So it's going to be kind of dicey, but I'm going to go ahead and do it because it's really the only shot we have with only two minutes left. There's no way we can capture the bases and acquire enough points, especially when they have two bases captured right now and they're getting you know, six points for every three points that we get. So uh, now it's going to be three on three, but this is an even deal here. And with a minute to go before we capture that base, there's no way we are going to win the match unless we take out that Yamato. So that's the plan is to go up here and uh, get it done. So yeah, now we're spotted and he is moving away from us and he can... Uh, Try to take us out. Luckily, we haven't been touched throughout the entire match. And yeah, so uh, that's what we have going for us. Here I'm going to stay in this cubby hole. And actually, I don't even want to back up and go take a look because uh, chances are he would obliterate us. And we just have to hope that these torpedoes do their job moving at 90 knots. You got to figure that they will, and they do. Two more floodings and two more torpedo hits. All right, well, there you go. That is a big-time victory for the small end. We snatch a victory from the Jaws of Defeat. 360,000 credits, 168,000 battle performance total damage on 16 torpedo hits, a destroyed ship, 11 floodings. That, so there you go. The um, pan-European... Destroyer torpedoes definitely will cause floodings more times than not. We did get a captured base, liquidator metal, high caliber metal. Let's see how we did on the team result. This looks like a pretty good uh, score right here. 2,800 XP, almost 2,900 XP. Second place overall, so Yoshino player really racked up some big time XP right there to come in first place with over 3,000 XP, but um, yeah, we, we held our own pretty well. And all right, let's see how we did on the economy tab. 166,000 credits by the time it was all said and done. All right, well, that's it for the sea trials of the small end. Big time torpedo boat with big time potential there. Even though I had the heel consumable set up, I did not use it. I'll have to try it again with the radar consumable and see what I can do with that. So if nothing else, you got to see a little bit about the ship. Let me know what you think down below. This is the Jaguar and I'll see you on the high seas. Thanks for watching. Hit subscribe if you like it.